When I was a child, after a night of being abused, I would go about my day getting my chores done. And if it was a school day, all the better. Because so much would be going on, I'd have little time to focus on the memories of the night before. However, if it happened to be on a Friday or a Saturday night, the next day after morning chores, eating breakfast, I'd find refuge in the floor of my closet. For some inexplicable reason, I found it to be the perfect hiding place. My mother's collection of long dresses hung there and their length allowed me to conceal myself most effectively. If someone were to open the closet door, they just wouldn't see me behind those dresses hidden. I would inevitably recollect the fear and hopelessness of the previous night. As the memories flooded my mind, my body would respond with uncontrollable sweating and trembling. And just before reaching the point of nausea, I'd always turn to God for help. Although I didn't believe he was physically in the closet with me, I imagined him high up in heaven. But in my desperation of not wanting to throw up, it was all I could utter. And what followed was remarkable. Either I'd be awakened by my frustrated mother calling my name incessantly, irritated that I hadn't responded to her earlier, or I'd naturally rouse from a peaceful slumber. In hindsight, I'm convinced that God heard me, a frightened child seeking solace among the horrors of the past night, was heard. Just like the man in Psalms 34, 6, it says, this poor man called to the Lord and he heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. God heard me, just as he heard that man. Though he didn't instantly rescue me from all the turmoil of my life, his compassion was evident and he granted me rest so desperately needed, step by step toward my healing. Remember, because he lives, it changes everything. He hears you.